would you characterize your campaign as favorable towards decentralization and local governance? Yeah, but I would even go deeper. Let me tell you, my journey since I experienced what I saw the caste system in India as a very young child, I was very motivated on a personal level to really understand these systems of oppression. So I studied everything I could get a hold of, left wing, right wing, the works of Thomas Paine, John Locke, Lenin, Marx, Bakunin, all these guys. And what you find with all the names that I just mentioned, if you want to give them the benefit of the doubt, let's say they were sincerely trying to figure out the human condition, most of their efforts or their approach to looking at the world and social systems were based on philosophy, philosophical ideas, the philosophy of Heidegger or classical liberalism. But these were all philosophical contexts. When you apply philosophical tools to understand the world, it's almost akin to applying philosophy to try to figure out electromagnetism. You will come up with some ideas, conjectures, but you don't really understand what's really going on. The physics, the science of understanding large-scale systems really didn't come into being until the work of Ilya Prigioni in the 1950s, 1957, in that period, in the works of physical chemistry. Engineering system science now gives us the approach, in particular with the contributions I've made in the field, to really see the world as it is and come up with actual principles. Engineering principles that you can really understand physically. And these principles are manifest in the field called control system science. And what's interesting is the nine principles that exist in control system science. Interesting enough, my Fulbright work revealed they also show up in ancient systems of yoga and systems of medicine. It's quite amazing. It turns out that the ancient yogis and rishis were actually engineering system scientists. But with these nine principles, which are grounded in reality, material reality that you can measure, understand, experience, they're not just philosophical ideas. We now have a much more profound way of really understanding large scale and small scale systems. Be your body, which is a complex system or the um, world anything. And so that's what I teach every Mondays. Now we've trained other people to teach it. I used to teach this at MIT, but without this understanding, people are always in the cloud, very nebulous ideas. Uh, but engineering system science reveals some very fundamental principles. One is the concept of motion, movement of information, matter, and energy, which you could say is freedom. In the Indian tradition, it was called Vata, the Vata principle. In the engineering tradition, it's called transport. The second is conversion of information, matter, and energy, conversion principle. And that is about taking something from one form to another. You do that every time you eat an apple, your body converts, digests, you get energy out of it. Or your CPU does it on your machine, you type in one plus one, it converts it to two. So the conversion principle exists everywhere in nature. In politics, it is really applying the scientific method, taking all sorts of ideas and then figuring out which one actually works. That's how truth is manifest through this scientific process. So truth, freedom are the processes of conversion and transport. And the third process, which comes from engineering physics, is really the concept of the structure structural or the storage piece, things that contain things. Your skeletal structure holds you and contains you. The foundation of this house contains the building here, right? All the members and the joints and all that. Well, physical health, spiritual health, economic health is what sustains the society. So you see, we now have a framework. I'm, I'm not going to go through the whole training here, but now we can start looking at the questions you're saying. How do you actually look at society? How do you actually understand society from a standpoint of these principles? So you can say, okay, a particular culture? How much freedom do they have? Movement? How much truth do they have? Scientific infrastructure to really explore truth and what is their health? So these three things really give us a different way. Now, the principles that you refer to, decentralization, match, but in a much more accurate way with a, a phenomenon called self-organizing systems. So self-organizing systems are not localized in one area, but what it also shows if you want to create change, you don't need to affect all 8 billion particles or all 8 billion people, right? You can affect a finite set of people by raising their consciousness to this understanding and you can change the world. So yes, unfortunately, a lot of the old stuff, libertarian philosophy, you know, everyone's trying to get it, but they don't have the tools to really understand the physics. So they sort of get to certain points and then they don't. But engineering systems approaches will always deliver you the answer, the real answer versus sort of approximations. We need to build a bottoms up movement. Go to shivaforpresident.com and volunteer.